confirms the fact. Terry Fennick from the North East saves the Cockney Cup final for Queen's Park Rangers. Keith Birkinshaw, who's had so much disappointment this season, Spurs thought they'd run it through Glen Hoddle and they had it snatched away from them, as indeed they've had three other prizes snatched away already this season. And Fennick shows his delight. The first fullback ever to score from open play in a Wembley final. And what a priceless goal for the second division side. A replay next Thursday here at Wembley. And the Rangers supporters in this driving rain, when they thought the day had ended in disappointment, salute Peter Hucker, because although I'm sure the man of the match will be decided over the two games, as it was last year, when Joe Corrigan won it, for my money today, he would take some beating on this performance. He started off in the right frame of mind, Peter Hucker, and he carried it through all the way. The kickoff, by the way, on Thursday will be half past seven. And many of those supporters now will be hoping to get tickets to come back again. Don't forget there's one important point about the replay, which Terry Venables is totally aware of. Glenn Roder cannot play. The Rangers captain will be suspended from the replay because he was sent off at Luton in a league match and the suspension starts 14 days from the sending off, which will be on Tuesday. So I would imagine that John Gregory will captain the team and Rhoda, applauding the fans, will be disappointed to know that he can't play in the second match. Rangers will have to adjust their back four Clive Allen, whose day ended early with an ankle injury. And one wonders whether he could possibly be fit for Thursday. It would appear not from that picture. But time is a great healer. Some of the players have been uh, changing shirts, which I don't think is strictly speaking permitted now by the FA. However... So no presentations, just a joint lap of honour. And one reflects with Steve Perryman and Tony Curry, two of the experienced professionals, on the only two occasions when this has happened in Wembley history. Last year, Spurs Manchester City and 1970 Chelsea Leeds. Now a replay again, with both the goals coming late in the afternoon. And Spurs, who had only about six minutes to hang on, couldn't do so. So it wasn't, after all, Ian Gillard's last match for Queen's Park Rangers. It was billed as such by some people, because as I was saying earlier, he'll surely play in the replay. Well, Tony Curry this afternoon gave a performance full of guts and character. And Bob Hazel one could say exactly the same about him. Both players received injuries, but in front of this outstanding young goalkeeper, who had hardly been heard of before January when he came into the team, they forced a replay. So, at the end of extra time, the 101st FA Cup final ends between these two London clubs, Queen's Park Rangers won, Tottenham Hotspur won. And Keith Birkinshaw, you're in exactly the same position as you were 12 months ago. I saw like yesterday's, I, I just really can't believe it, I'm so shocked. 1-0 uh, up with, what was it, 10 minutes to go? Even in less. extra time. And uh, really, I don't think that, uh, apart from one long shot just before the final whistle of uh, the normal time, I don't think really Ray's had much to do. Um, but this is life and this is football and this is uh, the reason why it's such a fascinating game. Um, we're back again on Thursday. Well, uh, I saw you standing up uh, on your feet at the end. You must have thought when Glenn Hoddle scored that that at least was one trophy from your endeavours this yes, season. Yes, uh, I certainly did, um, because they'd looked tired at this stage and uh, really I couldn't see them coming back at us. But uh, is this the goal He won the up? tackle so well, didn't he? That's, yes, that was yes, the yes, yes. 
Then we kept our heads, I think, uh, round about the edge of the 18-yard box here. And really, it's, it's a lunge at the ball a little bit, but it, it, he knows where he's putting things, Glenn. He's, he's so precise. Uh, In fact, he put it through the legs of Tony Curran. I think we'll yeah. see. It just took the slightest brush there. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, what do you say? Their keepers had a great game, I thought. Yes, indeed. Um, and, uh, like, like Joe Corrigan 12 yes, months ago. Yes, yes, yes. Um, anyway, we'll come back on Thursday and see what we can do about things. For what, match number 66? Match number 66, six times at Wembley in just over 12 months. Not too bad. Well, I look forward to seeing you again on Thursday. Let's, uh, let's bring in Tony Curry. Tony, we were just, you just had a chance to look at that, didn't you? Because did you actually feel the ball touch the inside of your oh, legs? Oh, the ball, it, went... it was my goal, yeah, definitely. <laughs> You're not claiming the goal, I don't <laughs> believe that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I've been saying all week I'd get the winner. And I was hoping that, you know, yeah. I was wrong in the end. Yes, it did uh, take a little deflection, not a lot, but a very low. It, what it, was it... your feeling then, that it was gone? What, the game had gone? Yes. Well, no, not really. There was, what, seven, eight minutes to go, I suppose. And, uh, you know, we kept trying. Well, the guy without a shirt was the man who saved you, Terry Fennick. And I think, Terry, we can give you the opportunity to see the oh, goal that you I'd scored. Love to see it, yeah. And I don't know whether you know it, but John Motson was pointing out you're the first fullback to score <coughs> in open play in a final. You came in, nobody really picked Get you up in at there, all. You beauty, I'm over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Not many. But it is yeah. one of your moves, isn't it? Coming in on the. On yeah, actually, I've got it. Luton with the same type of one. Came in and got the flick on. Bob done great for his uh, great flick on, good clean of Yes, you got bit. plenty of power on it, didn't you? Please, that, yeah, smashed it. Mm. And now the replay, after all that. Yeah, well, I thought, very lucky with the deflection with Glenn's goal. I think, yeah, uh, fair result in the end, I suppose. You had a curious game, uh, Tony. There were times when people thought that you were injured. You certainly did get a knock early on, didn't you? And then you burst and take over control of the whole thing for yeah. a few moments. Yeah, well, there's two of me, actually. They put the second one out in the second half, you see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't do it, you know, 90 minutes. I'm so sure you'd never forgive me, me if I didn't mention that one tackle where you took the ball so cleanly it came oh, away with yeah. it right between your ankles. Only the one, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. there were others, but that was the best. Oh, there was plenty, yeah. Uh, Great. Well, we've got uh, Terry Venables now with us. Terry, if you'd like to sort of come through. And we can bring in a couple of the Tottenham lads as well. Garth Crooks, Tony Galvin and uh, Ray Clements. Hello. Terry, first of all, don't go, don't go uh, Terry Funnick for a moment. Did you think it was gone when Glenn Huddle scored? Well, obviously, the time slipping away, you think it would have been. But I thought it was a bit unfortunate. I think Gary Woodup would have got the ball. I think the referee got in his way, didn't he? Just prior to the goal. And it got a reflection, <coughs> as we've just seen, off, uh, off Tony Curry. Did it? It did, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, well, the way it was going, that's the, way, the only way Peter Ucker was going to get beaten. I mean, yeah. he'd he done very well. Marvellous performance yes, by him. Yes, yes. But um, there we are. Live to fight another day. Yes. Garth Crooks, you were the first. Can I just turn you to the camera so everybody can see? You were the first to suffer from the brilliance of, uh, of Peter Hucker because you really got hold of that one early on, didn't you? Yeah, we felt the first half as though he was having a brilliant game. Um, everything we hit at fired at him, he was saving. Um, and that's his job, really. Mm. Can I bring in Ray Clements, Ray? Because I mean, you had the quietest of afternoons, really. I, I don't think that uh, I don't think you had to make a save other than one header until the last minute of normal time. Well, that proves how well the lads played at times. You know, they kept QPR at distance, and I had really nothing to do whatsoever. But, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's, uh, it's that a draw. is uh, a difficult game at any time, but particularly at Wembley for a goalkeeper, getting nothing to do. Well, certainly, but I've been lucky. I've been used to it playing for Liverpool for many years, so it's just a case of concentration for 90 minutes or in this particular game 89 minutes before I had something to do. Let's bring in Glenn Hoddle and uh, Peter Hacker. Well I think that uh, you two were mainly in contest for the man of the match if it had been around. It would, would I think have gone to you Peter as it did to Joe Corrigan last year but for the fact that of course it's now carried over to the replay as well. Yeah. Uh... Well, if the boys here hadn't played so well, I wouldn't have had a chance, would I, really? <laughs> That's one of the things for a goalkeeper. He needs the other side to play well for a goalkeeper to play well. That's right, yeah. Um, I thought it went all right. I enjoyed myself. You told good. me this morning you were going to enjoy yourself, and you yeah, certainly did. it was. It was great. It was a good laugh. Glenn, we were commenting on the fact that you won the ball for the move from which you scored. I mean, yes. it wasn't a bad tackle, was it? Yeah, I was pleased with the tackle and it, I didn't quite know where it went and it, it went out to Graham, I think, and um, I just, my momentum took me forward and I just asked for the ball uh, off Graham and he slipped it into me and um, and for my first touch I thought had gone away from me but uh, I think Tony Curry 
yeah. began to close me down. I think it went through through Tony's legs. I'm not sure. Yes. Were you aware, in fact, that it had brushed his leg? No, not at the time. No, I just uh, just hit the thing. <laughs> yeah. And that presumably you thought was all over. Well, not really. No. I mean, we haven't learned our lesson from the League Cup, have we? Obviously, because we were. That's a good point. The <laughs> League Cup up, over again. Yes. Yeah, we were only up with three minutes to go. So uh, we done it last year. We came back on the Thursday and played well and won it. So we. We're not too disappointed the way we played. I think, uh, you know, the big fella was different class then. And today. the big fella, Peter Hucker, you've got to do it all over again now on Thursday. Yeah, it's quite a nice little ground to come to. I quite, <laughs> <enjoy> it, <isn't laughs> quite a nice little ground to come to, he said, David. Back to you. And I must tell you, viewers who took the trouble, and there were thousands of you to ring in for the man of the match. Well, if it had finished today, as 12 months ago, it would have gone to goalkeeper Peter Hucker. Look at the scene in the studio. And in fact, he got far more votes from you at home than any other player in the match. And those votes carry over, as they did last year, and they're still coming in, as you can see. Uh, right, well, we'll do the whole thing again on Thursday night. The kickoff is 7 o'clock, uh, 7.30. Details of BBC programmes later. And all those votes carry over, and you viewers at home will have the ch chance of voting for the man of the match once more. While Joe Corrigan carried on with a good second performance, let's hope people, uh, Hucker does, in fact, as well. Uh, the result of the Scottish uh, Cup final, it went to extra time. It was 1-1 at uh, full time, and Aberdeen have beaten the Holders Rangers by four goals to one. And now we join our panel, Jimmy Hill and Laurie McMenemy, who is disappointed slightly with the result because it means you're not sure of European football right. yet. I've got my fingers crossed again now. I feel a bit like Keith Burtonshaw looked at the end there. Uh, of the two managers, he was obviously the more disappointed. Terry was relieved. And uh, I think Tony Curry was tongue-in-cheek to say, well, oh, there was still eight minutes to go. I thought we still had a chance because I felt that one goal would have won it. Jimmy? Well, I thought that Rangers' spirit, just at the end, you had to admire it so much that it was going to enable them to survive somehow, even though you couldn't see it happening. I well, thought I, I, Glenn Roder did magnificently yeah. at the back, hardly put a foot wrong, and that young Gary Waddock, it, it was so unfortunate that he lost that one tackle, because it was almost the only time he was bettered in the game. Alongside the goalkeeper, I thought did splendidly, and the old man Tony Curry for Rangers. It would have been a pity, in a way, if Spurs had beaten them, although Spurs must know only too well that if they'd snapped up those chances, uh, Rangers wouldn't have been but apart from all that, Jim, I think Spurs will kick themselves really when they analyse the game because I honestly think they got caught on it trying to play, keep possession after they scored the goal, mm -hmm. and and uh, instead of getting it up, you know, the old-fashioned way of hit the corner flag, get it behind their defence and make them have to turn. And they were playing around in front of their own goal at about four passes, and the, the sub was dispossessed, Young Brooks, mm -hmm. and from that the corner, and then from the corner the goal. And uh, I think that uh, when Glenn Hoddle said they learned from the League Cup final, they didn't really, because it cost them the game today. Now, it cost them a win. You're not suggesting you should de deduct any bonuses because of Southampton. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no. I, I think that they're strong enough to come back on Thursday. Yeah. And, uh, and I don't think that goalkeeper can play any better, can he? I don't well, know. He does. played really well. He, did he didn't show well, any yeah. signs of cracking at all. No, no. Oh, and Tony Curry looked upon it as like a, a, a fitness test, didn't he, for <laughs> Thursday night? I mean, if he could play like that yeah. for the first time for weeks, what's he going to do oh, on Thursday night? They've got a nice night? outlook on the game. Yeah. Be, uh, they're nice and light-hearted about it, all, I must say. Oh, I, I, I enjoyed watching him play. I thought they showed a lot of spirit and it, within the side and a lot of happiness, a lot of joy at being there. And they deserve a second chance, although uh, it may mean we'll be wrong again. Well, <laughs> we'll have to wait and see because the whole thing starts again at 7.30 here at Wembley on uh, Thursday night. Uh, the whole replay will be televised live and we'll be showing it. And I wonder what Keith Birkenshaw will do. Will he play VR, the Argentinian, in the replay? We'll see on Thursday night. Well, because of the extra time at the Cup Final at Wembley, I'm afraid the Pink Panther has had to bow out of this evening's schedule on BBC One. In 25 minutes, we have another adventure with those Dukes of Hazard. Now at 5.40, an extended edition of the news with Richard Whitmore.